Welcome back fellow fox lovers. In this short series of videos uh, I'm going to cover the engine build for Project Quicksilver. Uh, next on the list is going to be ring filing and assembling connecting rods onto the pistons. There's a couple uh, small but very important things that need to be covered and I'm sure a lot of you guys already know this uh, some of these tricks that are coming up but uh, it's very important to pay very close attention to some of these things and pay attention to detail to get these things right so you guys can sleep good at night knowing that uh, it's going to be done the proper way. So kick back, relax, and uh, let's get to it. Here we are with the rings, guys. Um, I've always liked to use total seal piston rings, uh, mainly the gapless top rings. Uh, they definitely seal a lot better than a normal conventional ring. Uh, they are a little more expensive, but they are worth it. You get a little more vacuum and also a little more compression, obviously, because of the sealing properties. Um, for my application, I'm using DSS pistons, and um, they have a 1.2 and a 1.2 millimeter top and middle groove, and a 3 millimeter oil scraper groove. And here's the part number in case you guys um, have the same groove set up for a 120 for a 4125 bore. They give you five thousandths extra at the gaps for you to file fit custom, uh, which you should be doing anyway uh, for your uh, bores. And um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start with one set of rings. Um, here's one of them. This is the gapless top. And I don't know if you guys can see, but it has kind of a groove in it. And... Here's the rail that interlocks with this ring. Both of these end gaps will be 180 degrees out from each other. Um, both need to be file fit. Um, this right here is the Napier second ring. Also needs to be file fit. And then your oil scrapers shouldn't need to be file fit, but definitely check them anyways. But usually these things leave you enough gap uh, that you should be good. So again, we're using a 4125 DSS racing piston. Uh, I think it's got a 19cc dish. And um, I'm going to go ahead and start filing here. I have this manual filer that uh, does the job. You know, it's it's it, it takes a little longer, but that's fine. Um, but uh, make sure when you file your rings to always creep up on the proper gap that you want. So because we're using a 4125 bore, we're gonna look up the specs. And for naturally aspirated, I don't plan on spraying this thing. Don't plan on boosting it. And uh, we're gonna look up the specs and see what total seal has to say. So after looking at total seal's gap sheet, since we're using the max seal top rings, um, <clears throat> Here, the, here are the specs uh, for the gaps. So uh, we're going to go ahead and use this, and we're going to start setting up the rings in, in the bores and uh, see where we are and see what needs to be adjusted. So I have the first ring in the bore, and as you can tell, I don't know if it's, uh, you know, if you guys can see from here, but there's the gap. So it is completely closed. Obviously, it needs to be opened up. So what we're going to do is pull the ring back out, and this might be a tedious process, uh, but this is what it takes to get it right. You really only get one chance to do this right. It has to be spot on. So I'm going to pull this ring out. We're going to go file it, and we're going to creep up on the gap. Remember, 27 thousandths. Here we are at the ring filer. Obviously, I can't hold the camera and file the rings, but basically, you're going to want to push these end gaps into these rollers right here, and they'll actually pinch the ring together onto the wheel, and you just manually use the wheel, and... Uh, You'll notice that it takes off a good bit of material uh, at once. So again, just creep up on it. A lot of you guys may have the motorized versions. Um, maybe one day I'll upgrade, but uh, this is what I have for now. So this is what we're going to use. All right, guys. First ring is done. Only took me about uh, <laughs> 20 minutes. But um, yeah, there it is. There's our 27,000th gap. Obviously using a feeler gauge, this is 25 plus a two behind it and it goes in there perfectly so guys this is a very tedious process but again 
if you take your time, it'll be done right. You can sleep good at night knowing that it's done well. So it's just what it takes. So here we go, times eight cylinders anyway. All right, guys, one thing that I want to mention is uh, the way I have these rings laid out. Um, if you can imagine, the front of the engine is here to my right. And the back of the engine is here to my left. You'll notice if you look at the banks of cylinders on the block, <clears throat> they're actually staggered. On the small block Fords, the number one cylinder is the first one on the front on the passenger side. One, two, three, four, going towards the back. So if you can tell, five back there is staggered behind number one. This is very important when you're building a, uh, a small Ford anyway, or even the GM stuff. All of them have staggered banks. But it's important to note this issue because it will denote how your connecting rod is going to mount on the piston. And let me show you a connecting rod, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So what I have here is one of my connecting rods. And if you'll notice, there's a wide radius at this edge right here as compared to the other side. The other side has it, but it's not as dramatic. There's a reason for this. This dramatic radius right here, this beveled edge, is going to go along on the rod journal against the face of the crank throw. So for number one, for example, if you see it's ahead of number five, they're going to share a rod throw on the crankshaft. Okay. So what that means for your orientation on your rods and your pistons, if we call this the number one rod, which it is, then this rod is going to face forward. And when I say face forward, it means the dramatic bevel on the edge is going to face forward. On the same throw, number five, the dramatic bevel is going to face towards the rear. Okay, so this is very important to note. I'm sure you guys already know this, but uh, let's go ahead and hang these rods. All right, guys, with the DSS pistons and utilizing these C-clips here, two go per side to retain the wrist pin okay so what's important to note with these is how you put these in is you'll install two c clips at at either or at either end but you can start at one end so put two in one groove and then what you'll want to do is drive the wrist pin in from the opposite end and drive it into where it seats the two snap rings that you just installed and what this will do is allow you to make enough room for the wrist pin. Obviously, when you put the wrist pin through the rod, you'll install the other two C-clips. So I just wanted to show you how those go together. To install these C-clips, all you have to do is get a inside C-clip compressor, and it's got the fingers that go inside the holes of the snap ring. You just compress them, compress the gap, and slide it into the groove. One thing to note, guys, I forgot to mention this earlier, but you want to put your C-clip gaps 180 degrees out from each other, if you can tell. In this one bore, you have one C-clip groove is 180 out from the other. And it just helps balance things out. All right, guys, well, here's one that's complete. This is actually my number four. So... <clears throat> This is already assembled. It's going to install like this. My radius is uh, facing forward when it's going to be mounted on the crank and in the block. So here's one down, and we have seven more to go. One thing I will note is this is the engine assembly lube that I like to use. It's the Permatex Ultra Slick. This is really good stuff. Um, it is very slick. The only thing I don't like about it is it's pretty messy. It's stringy, but uh, but it stays in place as compared to the like the Molly Graphite stuff. But anyways, this is what I use, and uh, let's go ahead and uh, do the rest of the seven. Well, all right, guys, here we are. Have all eight of them done. 
they're all assembled um, we'll just go ahead and put the rings on next and um, one thing I wanted to note also um, whether you use the spiral locks and this is any manufacturer I've used the SRP the JE and now the DSS racing always follow the instructions uh, it seems like the commonality between all the pistons uh, the piston manufacturers is that either two spiral locks or two C clips of you, as you've seen here go in each groove on either side of the piston make sure that you use a total of four per piston two per side of each bore very important um, so I wanted to show you guys the fully assembled all eight pistons they're all oriented in the proper direction as far as the bevels on the rods corresponding to the proper bore all right everyone well, thanks for sticking around for that past segment um hopefully you picked up some things and um and i'll see you at the next one stay tuned